Hello everybody. Um, welcome to the SCS Post Race Show, the NASCAR Cup Series review discussion for the Southern 500 at Darlington playoff opener. Um, it's been about half an hour or so since this race ended and I'm still a little emotional. Um, I'm a sucker for NASCAR history. I'm a sucker for Darlington. Without Richard Petty, um, I wouldn't be a fan. Um, without Richard Petty, one of my favorite drivers in Bubba Wallace might not be where he is. And without Richard Petty, the sport would look so much different. And for him and his team to get this win with Harold Jones tonight is something special. And um, as someone who does love this sport so much, as someone who loves the history behind it, um, it this, this means a lot to me, even though it wasn't one of my drivers that won. I mean, there's been so many moments this year um, fans can be often critical of NASCAR sometimes, but I think one of the best things they did with this next-gen car is A, making it race so much better on all these intermediate tracks, and B, making it um, not just more cost-effective, but also making this a little more uh, fair and equal playing ground for these smaller teams. Um, but I, I do want to say, this is like the fifth, sixth moment where I haven't like bawled my eyes out or broke down, but I have gotten emotional. I've legitimately gotten teary-eyed watching great racing, watching this sport be at its best, watching this sport be what it can be, watching this sport almost revert back uh, to its glory days for a second. And that's truly what this race was. Um, this was a classic, you know, people say this was a football game. This was a NASCAR race. Hopefully we'll get Emily's thoughts here soon uh, from a Hamlet fan's perspective. But it's kind of like Daytona. So much happened um, that I don't remember stuff. So if I do accidentally gloss over stuff, I'm sorry. Like Daytona, this will probably be another insanely long um, post-race show. Um, but before we get into the sequence of events and finishing orders and Emily's thoughts, I just, uh, again, Hats off to Eric Jones. Um, so, Petty GMS, Petty Enterprises, after Richard Petty was not in a good spot. They, they they brought on guys like Bobby Hamilton, he got him a win at Martinsville, guys like Dario Franchitti, John Green, John Andretti. They, did, they couldn't really take him anywhere. They were a 20th to 25th place organization for a good period of time. Then they merged with Everham and created Richard Petty Motorsports. And A.J. Allmendinger didn't do a ton for him. Marcus Ambrose came in, though, and won him a few races, made the chase, I think, once. Maybe I'm wrong on that. Eric Amarola won a race with him, put them in the playoffs in 2014. And then from then on, they couldn't really do anything. Amarola injures his back, leaves for SHR, Bubba Wallace comes in. And his first two years were rough. Um, that was a period where the Camaro had just been introduced, and Chevy and, and really RPM, a small Chevy team, was... Um, in a bad spot, you know, they were not a healthy team. In 2020, they got a lot of sponsors, that, thanks to events we all we all know of. Um, but 2020, they showed flashes, you know, Martinsville, Talladega. Um, you know, Bob Wallace almost won at Daytona 500 for Richard Petty Motorsports in like his fifth cup start. Uh, 2020, they went from a 30th place team to a 20th place team. Uh, 2021, when Bubba goes to 2311, Eric Jones comes in. And last year, he had a few really good runs. And this year, with Next Gen Car and Maury Gallagher and GMS, who is just a powerhouse in the truck series coming over, this team is on a different level. This team has surpassed RFK. This team has surpassed FRM. At times, this team has looked better than 2311 this year, with Kurt and Bubba both running pretty well. Um, and I, I mean, why stop now? I mean, Ty Dillon even at times this year has cranked out a few solid runs. You've got nine more races. you got Talladega, which Eric Jones nearly won at this year. Um, you know, you got Kansas next week where he could go win. He could win any of these remaining races. You look at Bristol where he's run decently in the past. Um, you know, you look at Homestead. You look at Vegas where he can go and win. Um, and this team... It, you know, like I said, why stop now? We know Ty Dillon's leaving, and that kind of sink that a, a veteran is, is leaving. You might not have as much stability there. 
But Noah Gregson's coming in. And Noah Gregson is going to be in the hunt for the Xfinity title. He just won his fourth race of the season, um, which is the most he's ever won in the season yesterday in Xfinity. And I see no reason why this team is going to take any steps back. This team is going to be a legitimate playoff contending team. Think if Eric Jones had managed to win Talladega. Think if he had managed to point his way in. He could be in the round 12 right now. We could play the what-if scenario with a lot of guys tonight. Kyle Busch, Chase Elliott, Chase Briscoe, Martin Truex, Danny Hamlin. We could play that with a lot of guys. Even though they're not in the playoffs, this might be a bigger win because they're not in the playoffs. Um, and and it's, you know, it's, it's a huge win for an organization and a team that honestly, even with the stability of having a veteran in Ty Dillon, even with having GMS um, helping them, this was still a team that was relatively unsure about things, unsure about sponsorship, unsure about this and that. And this win is just huge. It's also huge for Eric Jones. I remember as someone who became a fan early 2010s, mid 2010s, Eric Jones was the hottest prospect in the sport. Winning races for KBM, winning races for JGR. Goes to JGR in Cup and was a little underwhelming. Uh, won a couple races, Daytona and Darlington, but he was let go after missing the playoffs in 2020. And uh, in 2021, he goes to Petty. Joe Gibbs Racing gave up on him, but Eric Jones still had something to prove, and he proved that. He's run well, that team has run well all year long. They've had chances, like at Talladega, to win races. They just fell a little bit short. Um, and tonight, they took advantage of others' misfortune. Um, so I do, uh, I do want to go through kind of the order of things. If Emily calls at any point, we'll, I'll, I'll stop that talk and, and we'll talk, uh, talk to her, get her thoughts. Um, but yeah, I this, wow. Um, so start of the race, um, lap seven. I think it was. You had rain. It was thankfully just a small little pop-up shower. It's been any race got rain delayed yesterday for like three hours or something. Maybe not three hours. A very long time. Um, and thankfully this one today was just a very small, you know, pop-up shower. Didn't really affect too much. Um, and we were back racing pretty quickly. Then you had Kyle Larson who had engine problems. The five team needs to figure out engine problems. They blew up at Darlington earlier this year. They blew up at Daytona last week. They blew up at Talladega in the spring last year. I think they blew an engine in another race this year. And now they do it here in the playoffs. Thankfully, they came back. They got the wave round. It was kind of like the Coke 600 this year. You know, this race was the epitome of don't give up for the five team. I don't know if Cliff Daniels gave any awesome motivational speeches uh, during this race like he did in the other one. But uh, it was it was big. I mean, you know, it's a big deal for that five team to come out of there with the P12. Um, and because of the misfortunes of guys like Elliott and Briscoe and Harvick, um, you know, they're not looking as poor for the cut line. They were below the cut line, and now they are above the cut line, you know, decently in safe position now. Um, so that, I mean, that's huge for that five team. Um, going along, you had William Byron win stage one. Um, you had Corey LaJoy, who was, I mean, aside from Aaron Jones and Michael McDowell, probably the underdog of the night. Uh, Corey LaJoy was running top 15 on speed, had some different pitch strategy at some points. Um, then you had, let's see, I'm trying to make sure I don't forget anything here. You had Ricky Stenhouse bounce off the wall really hard off too. We saw Cody Ware then do that twice, that ended Cody Ware's race. But that was really weird, that angle off turn two, those guys would just smack into that. Um, and then you had the the, or the Briscoe and Elliott wreck. They're in Chase Elliott's night. Even with the DVP clock extending 10 minutes to the playoffs, that didn't matter. Briscoe continued, I believe he finished 27th, and he's pretty well below the cut line now. Um, and then you also had, um, you know, the, uh, the Chase Elliott, um, yeah, I mean, his race was over. Um, totally was broken, that whole rear, you know, upper arm and all that was all messed up. Um, really unfortunate for that 9 team. Thankfully, they have, you know, those 15 playoff points for their season championship is huge. I mean, that might protect him from being out around 16, which I don't think anybody had him or Larson out around 16 now. It's a possibility. Um, then you had William Byron, who, I mean, he and Joey Logano were really fast during this race, and then Logano had a slow pit stop, but William Byron was still leading. 
William Byron had a really fast race car, um, and then you had him report, you know, engine troubles. Um, it didn't or, or didn't end up being too bad. I think he still had a decent finishing position. Um, but I mean, that was that was, you know, or, Hendrick was. I mean, I'm sure Alex Bowman was freaking out at that point. Two cars with engine problems. Bowman ended up with the top ten. Byron, I think, ended up with the top fifteen still. Um, so solid, solid run there. Uh, or solid, you know, end result there for the 2014 still. Uh, then you had Ross Chastain, who I believe he had, like, the left rear tire after a green flag pit stop is all skewy, all weird. Um, and, and I think, didn't he say, like, the left rear felt squishy or something? I believe they had a suspension issue, so they had to come and fix that. They were 33rd, four laps down at one point. Kyle Larson was 35th, four laps down at one point. Um, and finished 12th. I, I think Chastain was like 19th or 20th. Um, another playoff guy that ran really poorly, at least at the start of the race, was Austin Dillon. Only finished 17th. Everyone is discounting Austin Dillon, saying he has no shot to make it to the round of 12. Um, but people forget how good he was in 2020. Um, nearly won the Thunder 500 at a great car Richmond. Got into the round of 12, couldn't go any further. But had he gotten in the round of 80, he probably would have been a dark horse for the championship for that year. Um, his car was driving horribly. He made that very clear over the radio with some words that I am not going to say at all on this show or on this channel. Um, and he was not happy with his race car. It drove like crap. <laughs> he didn't say crap, but that's what it drove like. Um, and then you had... Dang, I'm trying to think what happened next. Kevin Harvick. Um, basically spontaneously combusted. He was not happy in his interview, and I totally get why. Um, NASCAR needs to figure out why these cars keep catching on fire. It's Ford. Um, you had Cole Custer uh, at Michigan. You had Chris Buescher at Indy. And Kevin Harvick was running in the top 10. He had bounced back after a kind of slow start, was running in the top 10. Um, and it, it unfortunately, it didn't work out for him. Uh, his car caught on fire, he was not happy, and he has every right to not be happy. NASCAR needs to investigate this. A playoff driver got taken out of this race because of an issue with NASCAR's car. Um, obviously, you know, like NBC said, this car's not gonna be perfect, but uh, if we're gonna be a professional sport, we need, to, we need to act like we can't have stuff like this happening. It's not a good look, not a good image. Um, we gotta fix these issues. I don't know if it's just Fords or what, but it's it's obviously you know an issue of, of integrity within the sport, and it's an issue with driver safety, you know, more um, uh, obviously than that. I mean, there was fire coming through the dash, there was fire in the cockpit, smoke in the cockpit, smoke inhalation. Uh, not good. No matter what medium the smoke is from, whether it be a, a cigarette or fire, house, house fire. Or, Whatever it is, inhaling smoke is usually uh, a very poor idea, whether it's intentional or not. Um, and then you had Kyle Larson spin again. His day went from bad to worse there. I thought it was really over. I feel like Cliff Daniels might have given a motivational speech and they just didn't play it. Um, for them to finish 12th after all they went to today was astounding. They kept getting the wave around and the lucky dog and all that stuff, but they spun again off forward. It's kind of got loose. It was a really weird situation there. Um, and then coming down towards the end of this race, you had three JGR cars that looked to be in prime position to finish one, two, three. Kyle Busch won stage two, and it was Kyle Busch and Martin Truex that looked to be the class of the field. And then last year, Southern 500 winner Denny Hamlin, who had faded kind of 10th, 13th, that area, came back up charging through the top five and he looked like he had a car ready to win. He still finished second. Um, I've hardly ever seen a driver that determined to win a race than Denny Allen was tonight. He had that fire, that drive, that passion in his eyes. He was going to chase Sunder at Jones if it was the last thing he did. And credit to Denny Hamlin. He could have ran through Eric Jones like Joey Logano did to William Byron here in the spring. He chose to not do that. And uh, that is big time big time props to Denny Hamlin. He had a run on Eric Jones going into turns three, or going into one and two, and he slid up, or going into three and four, and he kind of slid up. There wasn't anything he could do, and 
He finished second. Not happy about it, I'm sure. He might even choose to do something differently if he got another chance. But uh, he raced him cleanly on the only chance he got. And I think that's, you know, that that's a positive impression um, on me. And that, I think, should be a positive impression on, on a lot of you guys as well. Um, yeah. So I'm going to take a quick break here for just a second. And then we'll continue on talking about the Truex and the Kyle Busch issues um, and all that stuff coming up next. Alright, so uh, that was a very short break for y'all, but now I uh, just kind of want to discuss Truex, Bush, and that whole situation. Hopefully we can get a call uh, in with Emily here real soon. Um, so yeah, as I was saying, it was it was the JGR cars up front. It was Kyle Bush, it was uh, Truex, it was Denny Hamlin. And um, Kyle, or Truex had a lead over Bush. They kind of swapped that a few times. Bush let Truex go by earlier in the run because he knew Truex was faster. Truex pulled out to about a one and a half second lead. Now put this in perspective here. Martin Truex has nothing to lose. Absolutely nothing to lose here. He's not in the playoffs, unfortunately. He should be. Um, but he's going for wins. And James Small, to their credit, they did everything right. Martin Truex, James Small, that whole 19 crew did everything right. It was just their power steering that did everything wrong. They have the perfect strategy late in this race. The perfect strategy. They undercut Kyle Busch and they gain like four seconds. Denny Hamlin, for whatever reason, did what Brad Keselowski and Bubba Wallace had done over in the race. It didn't work out great for them. Um, or did in the end results, but not at that point in time. He stayed out. He ran long. He eventually came a little quicker than, than everybody thought he would, but he ended up in 10th, um, like 15 seconds back of Martin Truex. And then, with Kyle Busch five and a half seconds back of Martin Truex, all of a sudden, his power steering stops. Before you hate on Martin Truex and say, these this generation of drivers is soft and they can't drive without power steering, although Truex is... is the older generation drivers. These cars are harder to drive probably than the guys like Kelly Yarbrough and Kurt Busch had. There's more power in her. Um, you know, those guys you know, won races without power steering, or Kurt Busch almost won. He didn't win in 2003 in Darlington. But when these things lose power steering, they're like your car when they lose power steering. Your normal car, you can't turn the wheel. The thing basically is dead on you. And Kyle Busch is on you eight, nine miles an hour faster than Martin Truex Jr. was at that point and he passed him easily. Truex, done. Um, and he was heartbroken. He, again, you saw it in his face during that interview. It was a mix of, of angry, like he said, and just sad. I mean, I saw the tears on his face, and I mean, it didn't, his voice didn't sound shaky or quivery, but I knew he, he that's probably how he was feeling at that point. Um, when you lose races like that, you know, he said we could have won this Southern 500 five or six times. Just came up a little bit short. Um, and, you know, to no fault of his own, to no fault of James Small. So credit to James Small, he crew chiefed a great race. He had the right strategy. Martin Truex Jr. beat Denny Hamlin and Kyle Busch tonight. Um, unfortunately, his power steering line, his power steering fluid did not. So Truex is out. Everybody comes in for pit stops, um, or after the caution comes out for Cody Ware. Everyone thinks Denny can run Kyle Busch down. Caution comes out. Then you have Eric Jones, Tyler Reddick, Denny Hamlin that are moved up after pit stops. So you have Jones and Kyle Busch on the front row, but wait, there's smoke. And when I saw that, I had, NBC had just shown a shot of like the, the, uh, the caution trucks, the safety trucks out there. I thought they were putting down Speedy Drive from the 51. I saw smoke. And immediately I thought, I wasn't sure, I thought it was just Speedy Drive. Then I realized the 18 was blowing up. It took the NBC booth a minute to realize that. But it was almost like Austin Hill at Daytona in the Xfinity race last week when he ran out of gas or, no, no, his uh, car lost power. And he had to pull down to the inside of the track. That close to victory, that close to victory at a monumental track in a big race. And like Austin Hill, Kyle Busch, to no fault of his own, he drove a great race, you know? Um, Strategy-wise, might not have been the best call, but he was in the right spot. And just, it, it didn't work out. That's the luck of the draw. Um, and Kyle Busch, 
just like Chase Elliott and Kyle Larson, his, his points gap is better than it was coming in because of the stage points. Um, but, I mean, Joe Gibbs, man, I texted Elliott, I was like, he's got to be punching air because he had two drivers that did everything right all night and couldn't quite do it. Denny Hamlin was so close, couldn't quite do it. Christopher Bell was good, and I think he ended up fifth. He just didn't have a lane car. Um, and that was very unfortunate because, I mean, the rest of the Toyotas were blazing fast, except Ty Gibbs the end. Bubba had a top 10 run. Um, but it, Truex and Kyle Busch, they just, I'm echoing my own thoughts. They did everything right. It just didn't work out. That's that's NASCAR. You know, deserves has nothing to do with it. You know, and it's you know, sometimes they look deals you a bad hand. They don't. Joe Gibbs racing a double dose, uh, two bad hands, a double dose of horrible luck um, tonight. Um, and then you have Denny Hamlin, and you have Eric Jones lined up on the front row. You got Tyler Red or no? It was a. Uh, was Hamlin on the front row? I can't remember. I th yeah, he was on the front row. And then it was, uh, I think, Logano and Reddick behind him. And Eric Jones got a great restart. And then it was Hamlin versus Reddick. And, you know, to Denny Hamlin's credit, he got around Tyler Reddick, but he, I don't think he did it soon enough. It was kind of like Bubba with Larson and Logano in Michigan. He just couldn't get around him soon enough. And, and you know, Eric, I'm not sure anyone could have beaten Eric Jones, though. The way he was driving that car, I'm not sure anyone could have beaten him. And it looked very similar to how he drove it. In the 2018 race at Daytona, the 2019 Chicago 500, even in the 2020 clash when he had a car ready for the dumpsters, Mike Choi famously quit. Um, when Eric Jones is out in front, he drives with passion. He wants to win. And, you know, while he might not have been as successful right out of the gate as everyone thought he would, while he might not have made out a big name and a great career with Joe Gibbs Racing like everybody thought he might, he's had a quiet career resurgence here. He's had a really strong you know, resurgence with Petty GMS. And speaking of GMS, how about GMS? You know, I, I talked about it at the start of the show, without GMS, Petty might be dead right now. But GMS in their first year as a cup program win, and not only win, they win the Southern 500 at one of the toughest tracks. That's gotta feel really, really good. Um, so that, that's gotta feel just absolutely great for those guys. Um, and I, I know they're, they're very, very happy. I do want to talk about one more thing here before we get into um, results and get Emily's thoughts here, hopefully. Um, but um, Yeah, and that's Daniel Suarez. So Daniel Suarez tonight had to start at the rear and sort of pass through. Uh, he got lucky because the rain caution, sure. Um, and he was able to get the free pass right there and then. But, um, he charged in this race, and a lot of people were saying, hey, look out for Suarez. Even after he got the penalty for failing inspection three times, look out for Suarez. And um, Daniel Suarez tonight, again, he didn't do anything wrong. He essentially drove a perfect race. There were some scary moments, you know, him and Christopher Bell and Logano when they were like four wide exiting the corner. I thought Logano was going to wreck the whole field here. <laughs> um, couldn't have a turn two. You had Logano and Blaney racing really aggressively, Bubba and Blaney. The playoff drivers race each other hard tonight, the non-playoff drivers race each other hard tonight, and that's how it should be. Um, but again, Daniel Suarez is running up fourth before everybody pitted, and then the caution came out. Uh, was that the first caution? No, that was the Harvick. That was Harvick's caution when he caught on fire. Um, so yeah, the caution comes out there. Um, and then that sets him and everybody back. I think Reddick got the free pass, or everyone else had to wave around. And you know, guys like Blaney, who ended up 13th, they couldn't really get back up there. Um, but Daniel Suarez drove one heck of a race. And like Kyle Larson, he was his race was the epitome of don't give up. Um, and I, I think he only finished like 16th or something. I, I think he's just barely um, on the outside looking in as far as the playoffs go right now for the round of 12 but uh, he drove his butt off. He drove one heck of a race. And I think we're seeing why Justin Marks, I think we saw tonight why Justin Marks and Pitbull wanted to build that team around him. Um, but this was the most speed track house had shown in a while before the suspension issue. Chastain was up in the top five. I think he would have been a force for the win with Blay, uh, Byron and Lugano earlier this year in the spring race if he had uh, you know, spun out off turn two. And that turn two wasn't as big of a triple spot. They repaved it 
um, after the spring race last year, they repaid that section off turn two. It was trouble in the Southern 500 last year. It was trouble this year in the spring race. It was um, kind of a trouble spot. You know, like I said, the near wreck of Logano and Bell and, and uh, some guys did have trouble getting loose up off that corner. I'm not sure if that's what caused Stenhouse and Ware to just like moon bounce off the turn two wall, but um, it was insane. Um, this watching Trackhouse break the narrative that they'd had all summer. Um, you also saw guys like Byron and Bowman do that. Bowman gets his first top 10 in a really long time. Byron had one top 10 in the last 18 races. Bowman had one top 10 in the last 12 races. Uh, two guys that really needed good runs got him. One guy that really needed a good run and didn't get it was Briscoe. And that was unfortunate circumstance of uh, Chase Elliott spinning right in front of him. Um, he wasn't running really fast anyway. I, I saw at one point him and Dylan were battling for like 33rd. They were getting passed by Landon Castle. And don't get me wrong, Landon Castle is an okay driver, but when you're getting passed by um, a Spire car, that's usually not the best sign of things. Um, 23-11 tonight was a pleasant surprise. They had shown a lot of speed earlier in the season at Darlington. Kurt Busch and Bubba Wallace probably both had top seven or eight cars. They were both involved in the big one with Martin Truex getting wrecked off turn two. Bubba Wallace tonight in that 45 for the owner's points, and I don't know where he is owner's points playoff-wise. I don't think there's anywhere to check that, but he brought home a solid ninth place finish. Ty Gibbs was running, you know, top 10 after that hard fire when, when he was on the right pit call with Bubba and, and Keselowski and all them. Um, and that ended up, um, you know, ending in like a 15th place finish for him. This is his first time to Darlington in a cup car, and I think having the Xfinity experience at Darlington, I believe this was his second or third. Uh, he'd run two or three Xfinity races at Darlington already. That really helped. And well, he hasn't been great there in Xfinity. He ran really solidly there for a, a first time. Uh, guy going there for the first time, but um, I do want to give a lot of credit to Bubba Wallace for, for running a really, really strong race. Um, Brad Keselowski had probably his best race of the season. Um, while some of it was a tad fluky, you know, coming on strategy, Brad was running top 10, top 12 at the end of that race, and I think finished 10th, um, or somewhere in that realm. Um, and that was really great to see. Chris Busher, on the other hand, struggled all night long. He thought he might be a little faster. I think they were in top 10 here in the spring, 17 did. Justin Haley, who finished third here in the spring, him and his colleague teammate for this race, Daniel Hammer, my colleague didn't really show a lot tonight. Um, I was looking for Stenhouse, because I think he finished top 10 here in the spring when he had that little mini run uh, late late spring or early summer, where he had like three or four top 10s in a row. Um, he didn't really show up, but Michael McDowell did. Um, I'm hoping to do like kind of an award show after the season for, you know, popular driver or best underdog or overperformer, uh, worst underperformer, stuff like that. I might not be able to guys vote on that or you know, I'm not really sure on that front yet. But um, Michael McDowell, I believe, finished sixth tonight, I want to say. Um, and he, you know, again, like, um, you know, because obviously kind of up there on that, that late pick call, but um, he stuck up there. Or, he, he stayed up there, you know, he, he stuck up there in the, in the front half of the pack and, and proved that he belonged. Uh, Cole Custer also had his best run in quite a while. I think he bought over top 15 in a year where a lot of people have been saying Custer might lose his ride. I'm not sure if he proved him wrong tonight, but he certainly did a very serviceable job. That's we should be seeing. That's where we should be seeing the, that 41 car run most of the time. Ty Dillon ends up 22nd after... Uh, and that's probably mainly due to attrition, but solid job by him. Uh, Todd Gillen, not the best other 500 start for him, but a Harrison Burton P20. I've been a little harsh on Harrison Burton this year. He hasn't run great, um, and you know, other than Daytona and Atlanta, he really hasn't been a threat for the win or for the lead or anything like that. But he ran a really solid race today, as did Corey LaJoy. Poor Corey LaJoy. He, he, I'm not sure if he led a lot, but he was running top 5, top 10 on strategy call, running top 15, top 20 on pure speed. Um, and then he had a fuel pump issue. He had his kind of slow pit stop. And uh, that was just really, really unfortunate. Um, because he was having a really solid run in a car that shouldn't be running where he ran. And Landon Castle, to his credit, kind of came back for a solid run as well. Um, but yeah, um, 
I just wanted to give a few shout outs to a few underdogs tonight, a few guys that performed um, above definitely where, where I thought they would perform. Um, so let's go through the stage one, the stage and race results while I wait on Emily to call us. Hopefully, hopefully she can call in and give us her, her thoughts. Let's check up on the camera and how much time we got. Okay, we got plenty of time. I think I will. It's going to be a really long show again. Um, so it was William Byron that won stage one, um, but then the four JGR Toyotas were right there. Denny Hamlin second in stage one, Bush third, Bell fourth, Truex fifth. Before Lugano slow pissed off, I was thinking it would be the Byron and Lugano show for the whole race, or at least for the first uh, early portions, um, about half of this race. And then Lugano kind of faded. Uh, he came back to finish in solid spot. Ryan Blaney only finished 13th, but he was running top 10 for a good amount of this race as well. Um, Chastain was sixth in the stage. Reddick was seventh. Jones was eighth. Blaine ninth. Bubba 10th. He was like sixth, seventh. He even got up to fifth at one point. I, I was hoping he'd run a little better than ninth, hoping he could be in the top five, maybe even be in the mix for the win wasn't meant to be. Austin Sindrick really didn't have a great night. Um, his first 7500 start, only his second Cup Darlington start. Um, I just don't think it's really his track, but uh, it definitely is Eric Jones' track for sure. You had Kyle Busch win stage two, then it was Truex again, who is easily, you know, the fastest of the non-playoff guys, as we thought he would be. He has nine chances to go out and steal more wins, and I think him and Bubba Wallace watch out for them at Kansas. Um, Blaney was third in the stage, Logano fourth, Byron fifth, Bell sixth, Bowman seventh, he finally got stage points running up there, sixth, seventh, competing with Bell and them. He and Suarez and Blaney got really loose on the front stretch at one point. Um, Suarez eighth in the stage, Jones ninth, McDowell tenth. Uh, and then now going to the race results. Um, yeah, really great racing tonight that we saw. Uh, you had Eric Jones winning, Denny Hamlin second, Reddick third, Logano got up to fourth, while wow, Bell fifth, McDowell sixth, Kozlowski seventh, Byron eighth, Bubba ninth, Bowman tenth. Cannot express how badly Alex Bowman needed that. He needed this finish in a big way. Alma Walla was 11th. He ran about 20th all day. He did a good job, you know, taking advantage of some others' misfortunes and, and working up to a solid finish. Already talked a lot about Kyle Larson and the job they did to come back from their misfortunes. You had Ryan Blaney finish 13th, Cole Custer 14th, Ty Gibbs 15th, Cindric 16th, Dylan 17th again. I was a little disappointed um, in the run they had. Suarez 18th lap, Carnley lap. Okay, he only got up to 19th. He did better than I thought he did. Chastain only mustered up to 20th. Burton 21st, Dylan 22nd, Hamrick ended up 23rd, uh, LaJoy 24th, Castle 25th, Busher 26th, Briscoe 27th, Gillen 28th, McLeod 29th. Kyle Busch 30th, really gonna hurt him in the points. Um, Chase Elliott and Larson also hurting a little bit points wise. Glad they're they're glad they had their cushions as well as uh, Ross Chastain. Um, Ware 30 seconds, rough night for him coming off the best race of his career. Harvick 33rd, he I believe is last on the playoff grid now. Uh, Yaley 34th, Stenhouse 35th, and then Chase Elliott comes home last. Uh, yikes. Um, yeah, really unfortunate for Chase Elliott. He, uh, he had a chance to be a favorite tonight, but I did see an interesting tweet. Remember 2020? Uh, Darlington in the spring gets wrecked by Kyle Busch, who wins Charlotte a few races later. 2020, second 500, wrecked in that one by Truex, or kind of wrecked in that one by Truex. Goes on to win the title, makes the championship for last year, while also having a poor 7 500. So, at least the last three years, having a bad race in the 7 500, or just Darlington in general, hasn't been the worst thing in the world for Martin Truex. So, just wanted to point that out. Um, you know, and say, hey, this is not the end of the world whatsoever. So let me see if I can find a picture of the playoff grid now, um, because I accidentally X'd out the tab um, that I had. So please, 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 playoff picture. All right, Emily's going to be a little bit later on. Um... So, all right. Uh, it's gonna be a late night for me editing, but yeah. Um, 
so looking forward in the playoffs anyway, um, we're going to Kansas, then we're going to Bristol for this round. Uh, those are going to be really interesting. Those guys like Elliott, like Larson, um, that uh, they're a little further down the list. I think they'll be okay. Um, but I, I do want to touch on this race, obviously, more. Um, because, gosh dang it, this this was... Okay, I, I just want to talk about Darlington for a second. I might get emotional again talking about this Darlington in general. I love this racetrack. Um, two days in a row, it's been on a great show. And I feel like since numbers, it's put up on great shows in every series. You know, even the truck series, uh, which is sometimes known for snooze fests. Um, see Richmond. Um, you know, it, it put on a great show in Darlington. Um, 2003, you know, the, the Ricky Craven Kurt Busch finished that race, probably saved Arlington. And, um, I'm dang glad it did, because without it, Darlington, or, or without that, if we didn't have Darlington, what, where would NASCAR be? But yeah, this was just a fantastic race. Maybe didn't have as much action as even I was hoping for, maybe not as much as y'all hoped for, but this, you know, like I said, this was a NASCAR race. This is a race that, that you could look at and this was an all-time classic. This will probably be playing in 10 years during a rain delay in Darlington. Or a rain delay anywhere. Just you know, on FS1 or FS2 at 4 a.m. When they don't have anything else to put on. Um, but a really good race. I did like the, the emphasis on strategy. With stages, we don't see as many strategy races. At least not as many fuel strategy races. That's a big gripe. Um, you know, with road course racing now. At least in the Cup Series. The strategy has been taken out of racing so much. And... Um, that's a, I was happy to see how prevalently strategy was featured. Um, so yeah, uh, I think I'm, uh, we'll take a very, it'll be a very short break, a uh, quick break for you guys, get Emily's thoughts, and then probably uh, wrap up the show here. So uh, stay tuned. All right, we are uh, we are, oh, let me actually move the camera close so y'all can actually hear what she is saying, but we do have Emily on the phone, trying to get her thoughts. All right. Uh, oh, can y'all, okay, I'm really, okay, never mind, y'all can see me. Um, as y'all know, she is a Diggy Hamlin fan, so probably a little disappointed, so before we get into, uh, into specifics, uh, what are your overall, uh, overall takeaways? Overall, it was a stinking good race. That is NASCAR, baby. Wow. Overall, I am disappointed. Figured. I really thought he was going to pull it off. That last pit sucked. Um, and I think the restart maybe screwed with things, too. And... I even I think if he had had like three more laps, yeah. he might have pulled it off. Yeah, well, it was it was really interesting. I saw him at the end, and I, I thought it might have just been lap traffic the reason why he was able to get up a little bit. Uh -huh. He looked like he had a little more pace uh, than the 43 there at the end. So I know you really only got to see the end, but you did get to see the Truex and Kyle Busch drama. So. Just yeah. Know what was running through your head when you saw Truex lose power steering in the lead, and then under caution, Kyle Busch blew an engine and lost. Yeah. It. Like what the crap? How does how does the engine thing happen? Like I don't know what goes on with the engine blowing. Is it like I wouldn't think that would happen when you were going at a low speed. Yeah. It just it just gave out and. Yeah. I don't know. This, this race though, I mean, I was saying like this is a classic Southern 500. This is what yeah. you know, the Coke 600 used to be. It's what the Southern 500 always used to be. And how durable these things are. You don't see these kinds of races now. But this was a race of attrition. We had large yeah. people in it. And Elliot and Briscoe wrecking. We had, you know, Truex power steering. We had Kyle Briscoe in it. So it was yeah. so many I know. guys out I know it was disappointing for Truex for sure. I think he would have been more disappointed if. You know, the playoffs look if different for him. Yeah. 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 Um, because then it would have been, it would have hit a little worse. Like, if he had, like, barely made it last week and then, and then, then this happened or something, that would have, yeah. that would have, like, really hit hard. Um, 
not that it didn't, but I think it probably was just different, like, okay, versus, like, devastation. Yeah, well, I was thinking about that, and I, I, I kind of agree, um, but then again, like, that, winning the race tonight was going to be that, you know, winning that race tonight was going to be yeah. them saying, hey, NASCAR, you know, Look at us. honestly, NASCAR is out of a playoff spot, we've been, like, the fifth best team all year. We are here, we are winning, you know, we're gonna win a race. And, you know, we're not out of this yet. And I think we're gonna see that out of that 19 team. Yeah. Nine weeks. They, as they showed tonight, they are not backing down. And while I do agree that it probably would have stung a little worse knowing that he could have gotten himself into the round of 12, he looked defeated. And, you know, like I said, he and Kyle Bush as well. Those teams did everything right all night. Both those guys yeah. drove about as perfect races as they could. It's just Sometimes technology and mechanics and yep. it's stupid. You can't control everything. Yeah, you can't control everything, yeah. and it's you know Truex said it, and he looks every bit as sad as anybody. And I just missed. I'll admit, I missed his interview. Yeah, he was. He did was not beat. To beat them. He was. He was defeated. You could tell. He really wanted. He wanted this race probably more than I've seen him won any race, and probably the championship for the Daytona 500. And, and in all reality, did he deserve the race? I mean, I... I believe so. Yeah, you know, but as 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 King Richard I once said, you know, the NASCAR deserves has nothing to do with it. I mean, yeah. We've seen that so many times. We've seen that this year. We've seen that just countless times in the sport. Yeah. Um, you know, deserves has nothing to do with it at the end of the day. It's where you finish, and that's what people are going to remember. People, you know term probably won't remember this race for Martin Truex, you know, getting the most out of his race car that he has all year. People are going to remember it for him finishing 30. Um, I don't entirely blame them, but at the same time, it should be noted that Martin Truex Jr. drove his heart out tonight, and he does, he didn't care that he was in the playoffs. He wanted to go win another 500 cars. Yeah, that's true. That's so, very true. Um, I do. I feel for the guy. Yeah, I, I do too. I, I probably feel more for him than Kyle Bush, just knowing how much this would have meant. I don't feel for Kyle Bush. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh goodness. So I was thinking you've never seen the 43 win. Because the last time the 43 won was all the way back in 2014 with Derek Yeah. I think it was 1999. I think with Bobby Hamilton and Martin Phil, and then it was Richard Petty in 1984. You've never seen. I don't think I have. This, uh, this, this is a big deal. This is a big deal for Richard Petty Motorsports. It was a team that, in all honesty, after 2020, Bubba Wallace leaves, a bunch of sponsors leaves, and they bring in Aaron Jones, and it's essentially kicked to the curb after underperforming at JGR. And look what he's done this year. He's taken yeah. the 20th place team to 15th, um, and we've seen the progression of them all year long. What do you what do you think? And, you know, you know they have Noah Gregson from the Xfinity Series, who is doing a heck of a job in Xfinity coming over next year. RPM is going to be a threat. What do you what do you think about that 43 team and just Petty GMS as a whole? I mean, I think we're looking at some up and coming years for them. Um, you know, there's it's kind of interesting always to look at what what's the future of racing mm -hmm. and where are we going with this and we may be seeing the future here. Yeah, well that that's one of the things NASCAR wanted with this next gen car was more more parity. They wanted more yeah. dog teams running up front. We've seen that with Spire this year. We've seen that with Front Row Motorsports and Michael McDowell having the best season of, of his career. And now we're seeing Richard Petty Motorsports. That 43 car is honestly looking the best it has since probably 1987, which uh, even though he didn't win any races after 1984, that was, I think, the only year aside... That was a lot. That was the only year in the last eight years of his career. Richard Petty, I think, finished inside the top 15 in points. This is the best that number and that car has ran in over 30 years, which is crazy to think about. But that's like a really long drought. <laughs> that, yeah, that is that is like Arizona levels of, of drought. We got going on with that 43 yeah. team. Um, so final thoughts here. What do you think about the playoff picture going into Kansas? We saw guys like Chase Elliott and Kyle Larson lose cushion. We saw guys like Kyle Busch, even though he didn't have the best end result, he still gained a little bit of points. We saw Briscoe not in a good spot. Harvick in an awful spot. Bowman gained points and is now above the cut line. What do you think about the playoffs heading into Kansas and Bristol goes up around the 16th? I mean, I think we are 
in for a really interesting playoffs. I think we're seeing these guys fight, but we are seeing people not in the playoffs that are killing them. So it's going to be interesting. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward, you know, now that we have seen the Truex, Eric Jones, Bubba Wallace, I guess. Uh -huh. gonna I mean, Bubba Wallace is in the owner's playoffs, not the driver playoffs, but, you know, these guys that aren't in the playoffs, they're going to take things pretty seriously. They're not going to let these yeah. playoff guys... You know, they're not going to just they're not backing you know, down. The side. No, they are not letting down. I, I love seeing that. I'd, I'd much rather see 36 cars race every week than uh, 16. So, yep. um, I agree. Yeah. Great race at Darlington. Thank you so much for coming on the show, Emily. Hopefully, we can have Thanks for having me as a guest. Next week. All right. Thank you so much for coming on. Denny Hamlin, unfortunately, doesn't get the win, but hey, I mean, not as a NASCAR me. fan, you got to say you still Keep enjoy that race. Out. Exactly. Uh, Keep it out for Denny. Hey, he's, he's a sleeper. All right. Thanks for coming on the show. Of course. All right. Big thank you to Emily for coming on the show. And I think that's about going to wrap it up. I want to edit this and go to bed because I'm very tired. Hopefully tomorrow or, well, today. Monday, I'll have a cool video posted about a little piece of NASCAR history in our nation's capital. And uh, thank you all so much for watching. Make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel, comment down below, and share the video on the channel with your friends, family, or anyone you know who likes NASCAR. I'm Samuel Subs from the Spider Sand YouTube page. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.